Hey everyone, Nefagel Tech here and today I would like to show you how you can actually install the Atmosphere custom firmware on your Nintendo Switch running firmware version 18.0 or below. So the system update 18.0 has been dropped like earlier this week. And now Atmosphere, Hackety and all other files that you will need to run a custom firmware on your Switch are updated. So in this guide I would like to show you how you can actually install the custom firmware from scratch. So right in front of me, I have a completely stock first generation Nintendo Switch. So I will make a separate guide showcasing you how you can actually install the Atmosphere custom firmware on a Nintendo Switch OLED, which I have right here. Uh, but in this video, we're looking at the regular first generation Nintendo Switch, which uh, for which we are gonna exploit and use the RCM method. So if you don't know, if you have a first generation Switch, I will have a link in the video description to a website where you can actually check your serial number of your Nintendo Switch. Um, and your Switch needs to be from uh, before June 2018 to have the RCM exploit afterwards Nintendo fixed it. So make sure that you have a first generation Nintendo Switch if you're following this guide. Um, and if I go to system settings, I can show you that I've just updated my Switch. So I go to the system settings. And here you can see that my current system version is 18.0.0, which is the latest firmware release as of recording this video. So what we need to do first is we need to prepare a micro SD card. So as I said, I have a completely stock Nintendo Switch. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna load up the custom firmware files onto a micro SD card. And then we're gonna make a copy of our internal storage of the NAND flash of our Nintendo Switch to the micro SD card, and then run the custom firmware from that uh, copied over NAND file. So what this means is that we can still boot to the internal storage of our Nintendo Switch. So if you have any games bought from the eShop or if you want to play your games online, then you can boot to the official firmware installed on your internal storage. And then if you want to play around with your custom firmware, then you can boot to the custom firmware that's located and installed on a micro SD card. So both firmware files are completely separated from each other, which is perfect for a use case. So um, first steps first, uh, we need to go ahead and go over on our PC. So on our PC, we first need to prepare a micro SD card. So I've already done so. So I have only a 32 gig micro SD card. You should have at least, I would say 128 gigs but the bare minimum is 64, I would say. However, for the purpose of this video, it doesn't really matter. I can use a smaller micro SD card, but in your case, I would highly, highly recommend at least 128 gigs. Uh, make sure that your micro SD card is formatted to FAT32, because otherwise, if you're formatted to XFAT, it can corrupt the micro SD card if you do a lot of read and writes to it. Um, and then when the system is interrupted, when then it's still doing a read or write action, it can corrupt your micro SD card, actually corrupt your entire micro SD card and therefore the custom firmware. So just make sure to format your micro SD card to FAT32. You can either use the Windows option right here, or if it doesn't list FAT32 right here, then you can use a tool like Mini Tool Partition to actually format your micro SD card to FAT32. Then afterwards, you can go ahead and go to this website. And of course, I will leave all relevant links in the video description. Uh, and in my last video, I've already showcased this, it's HATS. So it's a total custom firmware package. So it includes uh, the Hackety bootloader interface, which I will show you. It includes the Atmosphere custom firmware itself, of course. It also includes an NSP installer, the Tinfoil shop, um, some update files, uh, 90 DNS to actually prevent or switch from connecting to the Nintendo Switch server so to avoid getting banned on the custom firmware. And as you can see right here, version 1.7.0.1 pre-release has just been dropped um, and it supports the Nintendo Switch firmware up to firmware version 18.0.0. So that's perfect for a use case. So just scroll down a bit and download the latest release. So I've already downloaded this zip file and placed it on my desktop. Then we also need Tegra RCM. So Tegra RCM is actually used to send a payload to send the Hackety Bootloader interface payload to our Nintendo Switch. So we can actually boot to a custom firmware. So I've just grabbed the portable zip version right here, which can also use the installer version. Doesn't really matter. I've just downloaded this zip file and extracted it to my desktop. 
Then once you have those files, just go to your desktop or wherever you've extracted them. I've got my files right here. Then you want to open up the hats.zip file. And then you want to copy all these files and you want to place them on the root of your micro SD card. So depending on the speed of your micro SD card, this may take only a few seconds or up to a few minutes. So in my case, I do not really have a very fast micro SD card. So this process can take a while. Then what we also want to do is you want to go ahead and go to the bootloader folder of your hats zip file. And right here we have the payloads. So I'm not sure if it's located right here. No, it doesn't seem to be right here. Uh, we actually want to have the Hackety bin file. I'm not sure if it's this one. Um, so let me really quickly check that. So just to be on the safe side, I will download the Hackety uh, bootloader file separately. So I'll also drop this link in the video description, which redirects you to the GitHub page of Hackety. Then just download Hackety right here, open it up. And here you will find the Hackety bin file. So this is the file that we will use to boot our switch to. So just extract that to your desktop as well. Then you can close out of all of these menus. Um, here's my file. So now you should have the contents of hats extracted to your micro SD card. You should have the Hackety bin file placed on your desktop. And you also should have the Tegra RCM uh, interface right here. So now you need to go back to your Nintendo Switch. Grab your micro SD card, which now contains the contents of the hats zip file. Then you want to place the micro SD card into your switch. Just press later right here. And now you want to power off your Nintendo switch. You want to boot it into the RCM mode. So the RCM mode is the um, mode that we want to put our Nintendo Switch in. Actually send a payload to it. So you can either use a paper clip or you can use this RCM jig. And I highly, highly recommend RCM jig since a paperclip can actually damage the insides of your Nintendo Switch. So if you don't have an RCM jig already, I do have some links in the video description for you guys to check out. And the same also applies to micro SD cards and USB cables that you will need for this tutorial. So make sure to check out the video description. Um, but you want to just boot your switch into the recovery mode. So slide it in the right joycon rail, push it all the way down with the contact pins lining up. Uh, with the inside of your Nintendo Switch. Then you want to press and hold down the volume up button, and then you want to press and hold the power button for like three seconds. Release both of them. Then you want to grab a USB cable and connect your Switch to your PC. So again, if you don't have a USB cable, then you can find links in the video description. And then over on PC, you want to go ahead and open up Tegra RCM. Go to this folder. And then you want to go ahead and open up the GUI, so the user interface right here. Hit OK. And now we actually want to locate this Hackety uh, bin file. So go to the folder and search icon. And in my case, I've placed the bin file on my desktop. Open it up. Then hit Inject Payload. Wait for a few seconds. And this should boot our Nintendo Switch into the Hackety bootloader interface. So you can disconnect your Switch from your PC. You can also remove the RCM jig. And now what you can do is you can put the joycon reel back on. It doesn't really matter to set the date and time, but you can do so if you want. Hit OK. And now we want to set up an MU MMC partition. So as I referred to earlier, we want to put the internal NAND storage of our Nintendo Switch onto our micro SD card. And that way we can have a completely separate custom firmware and a completely separate official firmware. So no custom firmware files will be located on our internal NAND storage, which is perfect. So go ahead, go to tools. They want to go and partition our SD card first. Hit OK right here. And then you just want to have uh, the MUMC raw slider dragged all the way to the right. Doesn't really matter. You can also leave it at 12 gigs. I can also do a 12 gig. Uh, raw partition and this is just a partition that will show up as our internal storage once we have the custom firmware loaded up on a micro SD card. So I will press next step right here, hit start and now it will actually try and copy over all the files after I press the power button. It will back up all our files that we've copied over to a micro SD card to the cache folder of our Nintendo Switch. Then we'll partition a micro SD card, restore all those files to a micro SD card and then our SD card will be partitioned and we can actually uh, yeah, copy over all the NAND files 
all the necessary NAND files to our micro SD card. Then afterwards, we can actually boot to the custom firmware. So it's actually pretty straightforward, but this process may take up uh, a couple of minutes to like an hour in total because we have to copy over the NAND files from a micro SD card. But at least now a micro SD card is partitioned, so we can press OK. We can close out of this menu. We can go back to home, go to MUMMC. Then we want to create an MUMMC. Then we want to select SD partition and it should find a partition that we've just made. So in my case, it's part one. And now, as I said, it will copy over all the relevant um, official firmware files from our internal NAND storage to our micro SD card. So it will actually create a copy of it, put, uh, put all those files on our micro SD card, and then together with the files that we've copied from the hash folder to our SD card, we can actually boot the custom firmware afterwards. And you can see this process goes pretty quickly since I've only made a 12 gig partition of a micro SD card. Please keep in mind, however, that this does not make a full backup of your NAND. So actually inside Hackett and I can show it to you in a few minutes, you can also make a backup of your internal NAND. So in case something goes wrong for whatever reason and you corrupt your internal storage and not your micro SD card, but actually the NAND flash on your switch, you have a way to recover all the files that are stored on your NAND storage and have a completely clean backup available at hand. So we'll show you that process afterwards. Um, but as you can see, this goes pretty quickly. So once all these files have been copied over, I will come back to you. So the switch is almost done copying over all the files. There we go. So in my case, it took a little less than two minutes. So that was really quick. Uh, it also says that MUMMC is now enabled. If it doesn't show enabled right here, just press change MUMMC, select the SD raw one partition, hit OK, and then it should say enabled. And now I also want to show you that you can actually make a backup of your internal NAND. And in this case here you can see the backup EMMC option. So make sure to use that option if you have a large enough micro SD card. In my case, I can actually not make a dump since my SD card is too small. And if it's a 32 gig micro SD card, but you want to make a backup of the MU MMC and you want to make sure to do a MMC boot zero and boot one. And you can actually also make a backup of the raw GPP partition. Um, so just make sure to do that and make sure to copy over those files from your micro SD card to a safe location on your PC or somewhere in the cloud. So as I said, in case something goes wrong, you have a full backup available. So now we can actually go back to home. We now have set up the MUMMC partition and we can boot to our custom firmware. So go to launch and now you actually want to use the custom firmware MUMMC option. Don't use the SysMMC option. This will load all the custom firmware files onto our internal NAND and that's something we want to avoid because we want to have a clean, completely stock official firmware located on our NAND and then the uh, atmosphere custom firmware on our micro SD card. So choose MUMMC custom firmware and this should boot our Nintendo Switch from a micro SD card. And you could already see the Atmosphere logo right here. So that's a good sign. Then we have the Nintendo Switch logo right here. And then in a couple of seconds, we should be greeted by the lock screen of the Nintendo Switch. And there we are. So you can actually unlock your Switch and now it looks completely uh, like a stock switch that I've shown you at the beginning of this video. And that's because of course we've made a completely one-to-one -one copy of our internal NAND. But if I go to system settings and scroll down, you can actually see that we're running still firmware version 18.0, of course, but we have Atmosphere 1.7.0 E uh, installed and the E stands for MUMMC. So this is now running from our micro SD card. And if I go to data management, you can see this is the 12 gig partition that we've made that now shows up as our internal storage. And then we have 70.4 gigs available only on the micro SD card since I've partitioned that micro SD card into two separate partitions. And now if I go to the album, you can also see that we do have the homebrew menu right here with all applications that were actually uh, provided by the hats one. So you also got tinfoil right here. So if you want to install tinfoil, just press A right here. Ooh, and now it shows an error. So it wants to have a title override. So I'm not sure if it's installed right now. No, so if you have a game available, just uh, put in your cartridge and then you want to press and hold R while booting the game. And then the homebrew menu actually has 
a bit more memory available. So now it's quite memory limited and that's why we do have an error code showing up right here. So I can give it another try. Now it doesn't have enough memory right here. So you actually want to have a game card installed and then you want to boot to your homebrew menu that way and then you can install team file if you want. But of course you can also use these other files right here. So now if you want to boot back to your official firmware, you can just power off your Nintendo Switch and then boot up like you normally would. And if you want to boot back to the Atmosphere Custom firmware, you will need the RCM jig or a payload injector. So the payload injector is actually a uh, some kind of USB drive that stores the, in this case, Hackety bin file, so the Hackety payload. And if your switch is powered off, you plug in the RCM jig, you plug in the payload injector, put your switch into the RCM mode, uh, and send the payload from your uh, payload injector to the switch. It will boot to Hackety, and then again, you can select the e MUMMC uh, custom firmware option, and this will boot your switch back to the Atmosphere custom firmware. So as I said, if you don't have an RCM jig, if you don't have a pellet injector, if you don't have a micro SD card, USB flash drive uh, or a micro SD card adapter or whatever you will need for Nintendo Switch. I do have some affiliate links in the video description. But yeah, that's basically it. So um, that's how you can install the Atmosphere custom firmware on your Nintendo Switch. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please leave a thumbs up on this video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.